What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to The Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I am very excited today to be joined in my virtual Zoom studio with an amazing person who I have actually had the pleasure of coaching with now for close to almost three months, Serena Pecorolo. Serena, how are you doing? Great. I'm great. I'm really happy to be here and talk brains with you. You are an amazing individual. So let me give you guys a little bit about her background. She's an Arizona licensed professional counselor specializing in acute trauma and complex Post-traumatic stress disorder, she has worked in a prestigious group practice for more than 10 years and was part of a dynamic multidisciplinary team that provided acute care and intensive outpatient programs for individuals, couples, and families who were experiencing sex addiction, substance abuse, marital crisis, co-occurring diagnosis, and complex trauma. She integrates EMDR, somatic processing, and interpersonal neurobiology with brain-based psychotherapy in private practice. She is literally a brain warrior, a trauma therapist, and changing the world one brain at a time. Now, let me just give you guys a little bit of background. She's been on Michael Jaco's podcast and was so profoundly moving that she's already like helping people all in different parts of the world. She's actually saving lives Many, many people, as we know today, who watch this podcast are dealing with trauma at a soul and uh, spiritual level. And this is what Karina is absolutely highly skilled uh, and surgical in her precise ability to help people in this capacity. So this podcast today is going to be not a deep dive because I don't want to go that long because she could definitely, she is so knowledgeable. She can literally overwhelm people with her knowledge about this stuff, but I will have her back. Um, again, but again, this is a person who can help heal your trauma. So if you are watching this show and you are traumatized and many of you are, and many of you are just starting to wake up to this awareness, please, at the end of the show, you will find out how you can reach out to her. She is very gracious. Uh, she spends a lot of her time helping people all over the world. I mean, we'll talk maybe a little bit about that story at the end of the show, but, uh, she's an amazing person. Karina, thank you so much for coming on the Jay Campbell podcast. Before we jump into one of the things that you want to say, you know, give us your overview right now of this planet. Last year was it was in 2020 was obviously the collective dark night of the soul. We were all forced into this pandemic, scamdemic, whatever the hell you want to call this debacle of COVID and you know everything that's come with it. But where are we now? And obviously today is March 11th, 2021. Where are we in the evolution of this? Well, for me as a trauma therapist, so what I do when somebody walks in my office, I'm going to take them in as an individual and I'm going to see how balanced and functional their nervous system works. So your nervous system is, it's an energy field, right? 
So it's a, it's a, a, a complex system and you could feel the energy, right? And, and you know, and your audience probably knows too, that all of us, wherever we're vibrating physiologically at any moment, we affect the Schumann resonance, right? right. So like collectively, wherever we are, every single part matters. So every human matters and where we're resonating. So whether you're resonating in coherence and an integrated state or whether you're a hot mess, you affect the whole planet. So if we have like millions of people that are like all disintegrated and incoherent, like it really screws our world up. But it's yeah. like we can measure that now. And we have people that measure it. And, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with the, you know, the global um, coherence initiative. We could just totally lean in. And this is all I do all day in, day out, you know, hours, hours. This is my thing that I do is I just focus on where's your nervous system? How's your equipment working? Like, is it working? Is it not working? It's super similar to what you do at the phys physical level for people's like, you know, physical fitness and like all the definitions. And you kind of like take a whole person and yeah. you look and you're like, okay, this part's good, but this part is behind. This part is not really where it needs to be. And you, you know, you, you help the whole person have that balance and that overall health. And that's the same thing I do just for the nervous system. But what happens, and I'm sure you know this, and any other person that works in anything like that, or even physicians that are listening is, if any part of the multidimensional being is out of whack, you kind of can't work on your little area, right? So if you're working with somebody with their you know, body and physical fitness, if they have emotional trauma, I know that you know that that's going to come up. And if somebody can't, you know, lose weight or they can't go to the next level after that plateau and you notice that they start psyching themselves out and they start getting into that place. Like, I just think that's so cool that you do what you do and have that awareness because you can just be insanely helpful. So I do the same thing. Just, I start from a different spot, but it's the same stuff. And, and so when I take somebody in, I'm like, how's your health? How's your yeah. equipment working? And right. there's such a stigma to mental health that, I mean, I just, I mean, that's how I see it too. It's like your equipment. It's like our avatar, like, does it work or is it broke somewhere? So, so <laughs> is it functional? So now we have what, you, you know, you just, I'll say it another way. You said, you know, incoherent, you know, nervous systems. The whole planet is basically resonant or dissonant. There's almost no in between, that. Anymore, right? So the people that are in dissonance, the incoherence, are literally in victim consciousness, a hot mess, as you said it, or, you know, there, and it's a smaller percentage for sure, but there are people that are, you know, walking the path of spiritual awareness and living in resonance or attempting to live in resonance yeah. because that's how they can serve the most people, serving creation, you know, from a highest and best standpoint. So when you have a person that, you know, walks into your office today, okay, you know, dealing with trauma, um, I want you to kind of talk about, you know, big picture, the reptilian brain, the mammalian brain, and the neocortex. I want you to literally yeah. explain how a person who walks into your office, and I would assume the majority of people that you're working with are normally, at, you know, somewhere between a hot mess and wanting to get better, but just talk about the brain, the, you know, the, the, the various levels of the brain and how that relates. Okay. And my, my typical uh, client is somebody that's been to see everyone. They've been everywhere. They've done everything. They've tried everything. If they're an addict, they've been to rehab three times before they'll end up in my office. So they've spent like $150,000 and they're either not any better or they're worse. And it's just like, I get the most you know, complicated, you know, sure. crisis cases and other, other therapists refer their most difficult cases. So like, it's really like important that I figure it out pretty fast, right? I got to figure it out fast because somebody's suffering. And so, so this is like, for a lot of people maybe listening, like there's way more complicated uh, way we could talk about this, but I have this little raggedy thing on my dry erase board in my office. And every person I work with has to stare at this the whole time they work with me. And my goal is I'm going to get you better or I'm going to fire myself. Right. Okay. So we're going to look at this the whole time. Okay. And so there's these three, it's just, a, you know, there's lots of different 
diagrams of the brain, but this is just an easy way to talk about our health, our wellness, and what's going on on the planet right now. Yep. So this old, you know, this reptile brain, right? It's like your reflexive nervous system. It's the oldest part of our nervous system. It's been around the longest and it is not evolved. It's hundred percent primitive. It doesn't care about anything except alive or dead. Eat or be eaten, alive or dead, safe, not safe, conquer or die. That's all it does. It says, you know what? If there's two of us, one of us is going down. That's what reptiles do. Reptiles don't hang out in groups. If they produce a gene copy and hang around, they'll eat their babies. That's what reptiles do. That's what snakes and lizards and frogs, right. they'll eat their babies. And then, you know, we don't have the you know, continuing of the species, but like that's reptile. We have a part of our nervous system that is this. We have that resonant frequency of a reptile in our nervous system. So if you have somebody that's drowning and a lifeguard is on their way and they know it's a lifeguard and they got the outfit, they have the whole, and their brain kind of knows it's a lifeguard, but when they're drowning and they're afraid they're going to die, they'll try to drown the lifeguard they'll push the lifeguard's head down. Wow. It's irrational and doesn't make any sense. It's also really dangerous. And so if you're a lifeguard, you better know how to handle that because you have to assume everyone's gonna try to drown you. And then we have two deaths. So that's what reptile brain does. So when people start losing their mind when they're in a fear state of I'm gonna die and there's nothing I can do, that's the most dangerous kind of place that a human can be. And animals too, you know, like if a dog gets hit by a car and you try to take it to the vet, it'll bite the crap out of you, right? right? right so right. we're like that. So we have to remember we have that little part of us that can be really nasty and and um, has that instinct to survive, but it survives by killing others. We have a little of that, but it's one out of three. It's not most of us, but it's a part. So we also, thank goodness, have a mammal brain. So that next little part there that... Uh, that blue part, that's your limbic system. So I'm showing this, I like this little diagram because it really does a good job of showing the proportions, you know, versus just talking about it. The visual of it is, you know, it's pretty much just like this proportional. So your limbic brain is your sleep-wake cycle, your appetite, your energy, it's your basic regulator, which, you know, sciencey, you know, people know that, but what you want to know too is that's where all your that's where all the data is for relationships and that's where all the memories are stored where there was a betrayal in yeah. your group so relationship trauma is going to be stored in the blue part it's not necessarily stored in the red part the red part doesn't even care about relationships so it's <laughs> like i don't care and it doesn't remember and it doesn't even pay attention but the blue part does because the blue part says uh, i am a mammal I'm a biological creature that has a code, a biological quantum code to be relational, to care about other people. And when you're a mammal, these two team up together and they work in conjunction and they say, I am safe and I survive in relation to other people. So they put those together. So if you're not in good relationship, I mean, we go down. You know, we start to not sleep, we can't eat, and our health plummets, and our immune system gets all messed up. You can't really stay healthy. Your, your, all the chemicals in your brain, your immune system, that's auto program too. I mean, there's, 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 a, we have 40,000 sensory neurites in our heart that collaborate with our brain when there's trauma. And that's an unconscious process. That's an autopilot. So, you know, there's, there, it's helpful to have a true appreciation for some of this, you know, download program that just autopilots and is the boss of us. Right. Because you are not really consciously turning that on and off. Just like when you fall asleep, you're not consciously telling yourself to breathe and like, you know, um, your heart still beats. It's just autopilot. And right. so there's a lot of this stuff that's autopilot. So it's not like we're thinking consciously that we feel safe or not. This is like reflex instinct, right? This is survival. So mammals survive in a group. So we're going to get all freaked out if something's happening to our group. 
Because whether it's happening to us or someone else, that's our programming. Our programming right. for our species to survive says like, pay attention to that. Right. Because we have uh, mirror neurons. We share a network so that our sonars connect so that if something bad is happening over there, we know it, our spidey senses go off because if we don't pay attention and someone else gets killed, we're probably next. Right. And then we go extinct, right? So these are real dynamic, energetic forces of our biological, you know, it's like quantum biology, really. And so, um, so I just am seeing all this stuff going on and I'm thinking, man, our equipment is on hyperspeed yeah. because how could you not have this activated all the time, especially right now, because there seems to be some new thing all the time. Right. So I just right. want everybody listening, you know, really be aware that like, you need to take care of yourself different right now. You just have to, or the math doesn't work out, right? Just like if you come visit Arizona, you need to drink more water, especially right. if you come in the summer. And if people don't know that, like they'll pass out in line in the grocery store. And well, there's the lots of, on. we have people, well, now I can't even imagine, you know, it's like so much worse. But in general, like if you don't make up the difference somewhere for high demand or high output or stress, it, the math doesn't work out and you're going to crash somewhere. So like, I'm just thinking like, I wonder how many of us are really truly aware that we are compromised at baseline because right. what's going on around us is so unusual and you can't turn your, your sonar off. You can't turn those mirror neurons off. It's not smart. Even if you could, you shouldn't because if there's danger over here, you probably need to know. So you don't really want to, but like there's a lot of crazy stuff going on and it's also gonna deeply bother us if we don't feel like we know what's going on that right. especially freaks humans out. <laughs> that well, especially freaks us out. To, okay, so to that point, and this is awesome stuff, um, you know, you and I have talked about this off air in, you know, our conversations about, you know, where we are right now as a species from an awareness standpoint, right? And, you know, you have told me, and obviously I'm going to allow you to explain this on the show because I think that you offer a profound explanation of why some people can live in you know the apparent reality and then others live in total delusion and you know you have said to me that it all is due to programming since childhood by our parents now i want you to kind of elaborate on that on like why some people can see things with natural intuition can you know really be aware of what's actually going on and then so many and you know this are locked in this fear yeah. consciousness this red state it's of primitive and, survival without right, survival. it's without right. the complexity of wisdom and and you know evolution and context and all of that so it's just like primitive caveman brain so when people act like those lower frequencies you know where their nervous system is you don't have to have a functional imaging right. scan Right. Okay, what's happening is this part out here, this is your neocortex, this is the last part of our brain that comes online. So you don't have a full set of equipment till the end of your 25th year. So your 26th birthday, you have a full operating system. So just think about how much of our life happens before your 26th birthday. Right. Right. So like we are as a mammal, as a creature, we have the very longest drawn out infancy, you know, adolescent, like where we're not all up and running it's pretty crazy we are we have this very very extended time that we're not kind of capable right. okay so then whatever the experiences are around us we're very vulnerable to however that got set up so kind of what i want everybody to have a, a, a sense of and be a lot more aware of all the time right now is that it's a it's a field that's been around since 1997 and when we discovered mirror neurons and that sure. was 1997. So it's like interpersonal neurobiology. Okay. So what it means is interpersonal is a space between two people and the space between people and how that affects your brain, like literally how it works, <laughs> whether it's healthy or damaged. And right. then the biology part is your fight, flight, freeze response. Okay. So like what's happening in the world 
How does it affect relationships? And how does it either trigger or not trigger your fight, flight, freeze? Because if you get triggered in fight, flight, freeze, your health is trashed. Because yeah. now you have adrenaline and cortisol and you have all these toxic chemicals. It just ha- And you're going to be real unhealthy real quick. You're on your way to lots of diseases. So the, the goal, I just have a little nickname F3 for everybody that works with me. I'm like, constantly watch F3, right? F3 is like, are you freaking out beyond where you can think? Because the way you know that you went down is you lost the gray matter. Because the, what our brain does is it shuts down from the top. It's a top down process. So when we freak out or if we get overwhelmed and feel like we have to kind of like check out and not feel your neocortex, the whole thing goes down. It goes offline, you lose internet connection. This is the part that can be rational and logical and like have the facts and the judgment and like figure out what's going on. So this is the part that helps you be coherent and manage complexity. And it's the first one to go if these are too hot, right? So you have to kind of watch like the brake pedal and the go pedal because what a lot of people are doing right now is they're pushing the gas and the brake at the same time all the time and it's going to trash your health there's even if you're aware and you like you know what's going on if you're not managing the biology of this enough it's going to trash your health and so we think about like you know we jay and i you know we talk about like no no way are we getting that stuff in our body. There's no way we would do that. You know what? And so like, and we're watching our health, but we really have to watch all this other stuff, this Maxine, right? Because we have to watch out and and have a a little more um, contextual respect for the drain this is having on our biology. Because some of us who may not, get exposed to that they might get us anyway because of the toxic stress because we're right now in toxic stress we're not in the normal amount of uh you know yes we're resilient to stress like all of that so like we're in top even if you're like a real sharp you know prepared and aware and really healthy person this is a different time right so you have to kind of take care of yourself and others with that context and here's the difference that i want everyone to be aware of and try to help your buddies right Because if you do have a sense, the people that are kind of getting it, they usually did some work. Right. And if you talk to them, they have a sense of like how their past affects their now and they've kind of like made peace with it or they did some work on it. They did some kind of like they were uh, aware of how stress affects their ability to function and be like they've done some of that maintenance and some of that like working. That's a huge big deal. And then Mo- the majority of people, which I can't even imagine like not doing that, because how do you function, right? So, but uh, most people don't. Right. So most people don't do that re-engineering because a lot of times it's not necessarily anybody intended to it. There's some families that are like crazy and they did intend, but like the average family just has a bunch of stuff happen and it's just life, Right. So you do have to take an accounting of at the end of your childhood, which is like, you know, you're 26 to 30, you got to do an assessment and say like, well, how is this going? And what problems do I have? Because what I see with addiction is when you had a bunch of stuff that got sideways, upside down, and just like you got dents in your fender, you have some equipment that's like unplugged, the cables don't even like you know, they're not even plugged in. You have stuff that wasn't even loaded all the way. Like you can't go just jump out and do adult life when half of your operating system isn't even functional. So that's what addiction is. So addiction is like an equipment issue. There's some kind of problem in one of these areas. And unless you double back and reset this, you're going to struggle and continue to struggle. So what happens sometimes when people go to a therapist, they, they do talk therapy. Yeah. If you really are struggling and you've really got to dynamically change your function, you can't go to a therapist and talk about your problems. You know, you have to kind of know that as a consumer, like you need to say like, look, I'm looking for something very specific. 
I have to change this, this behavior. I have to change my health. Like I have to change these patterns. That's the kind of thing that I do is if you work with me, there's an expectation of change and movement or I fire myself. Cause like, I want people to get better, learn how to do it and then go do life and then go teach other people. Right. So it's basically just look for these things. And if you, if this goes dark all the time, why is that happening? So it's like in your house, if your breaker trips all the time and you're like, dang, that's annoying. I had to go all the way in the garage or you got to walk outside and reset the breaker. Well, our nervous system does that too. So if you don't have health somewhere and or you haven't gone back and reset your childhood crap, it will always trip your breaker. Right. So you have people that say, I can't handle it because they know that they don't have the bandwidth. Because if this is loaded already, they don't have room for life stress. So right. if you had a chaotic childhood, literally your nervous system, the, the electrical grid, it runs hot. That's your baseline for normal. It's like at the top all the time. Yeah. So you don't have room. So that's like, it's a pretty significant issue that we're all dealing with, right? And what I would say, doing what I do for a living is, I don't think anybody really truly appreciates how much childhood trauma everybody's walking around with, right. because in general, we poo-poo it, right? And then, you know, people are t scared to go see a trauma therapist, which I kind of get, but at the same time, it's sort of like, you know, if your car stalls every time, when well, you're out driving your car and it just stalls, right. like in an intersection, like, is that okay? But look at people. Their yeah. nervous system stalls on them. They either freak out and they can't help it. And they don't even know why. And they don't know how to like stop it. Or they get overwhelmed and shut down. It's just that. So like you just look for like too much about right. Not enough energy going on. And it's like just somewhere in here, there's a problem. So like I look for head injuries. There's a lot of people who have tons of unresolved concussions right. from all kinds of stuff. That's a really frequent one. So I'm always thankful for what Dr. Amen taught me. I mean, I learned all that stuff that he learned from the football players. And he did that big study with the football players. Right. And, you know, it was, it was insanely helpful. So really the protocol that we do that anybody that's an Amen trained person and Dr. Amen is, uh, is real specific to how we turned those NFL brains around. It was like, you know, Swiss cheese very dangerous brain they were getting in trouble they were either committing suicide yeah, or they were getting so arrested well. yeah. I was yeah. you know very sad and so yeah. Dr. Amon was like I wonder if we can do anything about it and thank goodness we figured out some great stuff to do and, and we can get people better if they know to go to somebody like if they find us yeah. but a lot of times still Right now, with all the stuff and all the movies about it, I can't tell you how many, you know, athletes, whether it's major league, you know, baseball or NFL, but they, they still don't hear about people that can reverse brain damage and they still suffer and end up in jail or, you know, domestic violence, right. like just on drugs. And it's like so reversible is not even that hard. And I really want people listening to you and I today, you know, I want them to like, really like they may have already done it themselves, but be aware that you got to like, let people know like, Hey, that's fixable. Hey, right. you know what? That's an issue. You might like have, you know, traumatic brain injuries or post concussive, like go fix that because it's, it totally is fixable. Don't walk around like that where you're like not a functional person and you feel like you don't have a choice. And trauma actually damages the brain, like right. it damages the electrical grid. So right. now you have an electrical short or maybe like five. Your brain has electrical shorts. Some of it just shorts out and then your whole brain just shuts off. Well, that's not helpful, but that's dissociation, right? When people dissociate and they like get trauma triggered and all of a sudden they don't remember the last two hours. Where were they? What like? That's an electrical short. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial. 
for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. Somebody is watching. I mean, because you're dropping profound knowledge and wisdom, and I knew you would. I'm very thankful for it. Um, if somebody's watching this show right now, and they will be, and you know, they're a 35 year old woman or a you know 55 year old man, and they're like, "How would I even know if I had trauma?" Because, like you said, so many people are so cognitively dissonant. They have just been working, as you said, gas pedal. Yeah, you cope pedal. around it. You just cope yeah. around it. How you know is, do you have an addiction? If you have an addiction, you have childhood trauma. We have not had one case that's an exception. There's just not any documented cases yet. Okay, so that's foundational. So if you have an addiction and you have not been able to get sober, it's because you haven't done your trauma work, by the way. So I, that message still hasn't been getting around. It's very frustrating because most rehab centers and most um, you know, sobriety programs totally leave that part off all the time. Rehab centers that charge $45,000 for a 30-day treatment, they say to us, oh, we don't touch trauma when they're here. We don't we don't touch that. I mean, you know, they're not stable enough. So like, we don't touch that. And we're like, okay, well now, yeah. now guess what we figured out. That's why people go to rehab, come out and go right back. Right. Which is just horrible because you feel terrible. Your family's pissed at you. They feel terrible. And it's like the treatment isn't correct. The treat, it's not the person it's typical it's allopathic medicine treatment is wrong right well, so typical allopathic medicine treat the symptom and not the patient i mean it's just and they don't get better in every level okay so i wanted to find so something you, hold on i wanted to find some things addiction and this is important isn't just drugs and alcohol it's food too no. correct it's anything that you are stuck on that's it okay anything that you're stuck on and you can't stop. Like it can be work. And you know that literally you can't stop at five. Your brain won't let you. You want to because you're tired and you'd actually like to go home and have dinner with your kids. But this part of your brain that has trauma goes, no, we're not going home. We're not going home. We're staying. And you're like, but I want to go like it is. And they're like, no. And so if you have childhood trauma about children and dinner, then your trauma brain goes, guess who's the boss of you right now? It's me. And we're not going to go home because we don't want to be reminded of home and family. And, you know, all of that stuff that my kids have now, I didn't have that. And you know what? I'm so glad my kids have it because that's the only thing I wanted is for my kids to have a better childhood. But when I go home, all I see is, oh, my God, like, Same man. Shit. I didn't have that, right? So you either repeat it or you're still trauma triggered because you're reminded, oh my God, that's what normal is. I didn't have that. Right. And it's going to be the boss of you. So you can, you can get addicted to volunteering. You can get addicted to church. So you can get addicted to exercise. You can over-exercise. And so how do you know? So here's the deal is if you have a choice, you can breathe, you, you aren't grumpy, you aren't so grumpy that no one wants to be your friend. Like you can kind of be a person if you can't do whatever the thing is. So you can't volunteer this week. You can't go to church. You can't work out. You know, if you fall apart, then that's an equipment issue. That means like you think you just like to do it because it's a nice, healthy thing to do. There's lots of addictions that are super positive that people will let you keep. 
especially if it's like you're the person that takes care of everybody else or you just work and make tons of money. People let you do that, but you can't not do it, right? right. So you, you're using that as your medicine. You're using it to escape because you're, your brain can't hold coherence and it can't hold the healthy resonance because it's got some viruses in there. It's got like equipment damage and it's not going to work until you take it to a mechanic. I mean, you can just take it to a mechanic and they just fix it and then you're good to go and it's done. But there's not enough like kind of information about trauma therapist and you want to go to somebody that you interview and you say are you a trauma therapist and if they say like well what do you mean by that yeah. then you go to the next therapist exactly. right a trauma therapist will go blah, blah 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 right like a trauma therapist is going to reset the back of your brain okay the back of your brain is your unconscious database you're right. not even aware of what's back there see how unfair that is your unconscious brain is the red and the blue part ganging up on the gray part. It's an unfair fight. This is the part that you're consciously aware and you go, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to drink beer anymore. I'm going to go home earlier. I know it sucks. I'm not doing it anymore. And you're like, I'm 100% in. I'm not doing that anymore. And then the red and the blue part get together and go like, isn't yeah, that right, cute? Bro. Yeah. Isn't that cute? <laughs> That's not going to work because you don't even have enough power. It's an unfair fight. It's two against one. Okay. And it's, this is the unconscious brain. Okay. So, you know, like I have my dry erase board in my office, so this is kind of goofy, but I'm at home. But so I just kind of drew this out. This is what's always on my board in my office, but I just want you guys to get the visual. Awesome. So do you see how much bigger this is? Yep. And this is your teeny little consciousness, okay? Do you see the proportions? And that's why I do this. I have this on my board all the time. This is what we're up against and you don't even know what's in there. And you are not consciously directing this behavior. Right. So this is the truth of who we are. And, and when people say addiction is a choice, I mean, I don't necessarily see that. I don't really see that being like a real thing. So like, you know, you do have to be responsible, but look, if you just try to consciously stop your behavior and you don't do anything about this, right? that's what most people do. What's going to happen? You're going to fail. Well, well, something you just said, that's profound. Keep that up. Keep that up. So, you, so, so when when addiction okay so like i said you're blowing my mind addiction is a choice for people that are in control of their constraint well but guess what unless you've are. been back here exactly and you're doing and that you work. took a little tour right. and you opened the boxes exactly. and read the exactly. files and, and so said, few oh, do that right forget it unless you right. did that if you right can't walk back here because it's too painful and you don't have support right. because you can't even get back here if you don't have a safe supportive right. environment your brain won't let you your brain right. goes oh we are not going there because we have to just get up and survive another day You're so right. i'm barely functional and i'm barely hanging in i'm not going to think about that right now You're right You're so right. unless you have unless you get away from the danger, there's no way you can even start it, okay? So most people go to the therapy and they do this. And this is cognitive behavioral therapy. And it's like, not like unimportant, like it's a little helpful, but this is what are you thinking and what are you doing, okay? Think a more positive thought and don't do that anymore. That's cognitive behavioral therapy. Well, Maybe. when that happens, what do you say to yourself? Oh, I'm a bad person. Okay, don't say that. Say, I'm a nice person. I'm a good person. I deserve good things. Okay, I'll do that this week. And then don't do that behavior anymore. Don't go hang out with those people and don't drink in a bar. Okay, then you try to do that. And you really do want to be different. And you don't want to do that stuff because you don't want to be like your parents because you hated it the first time. Right. And you're like, please, God. 
help me be a different person. Right. Well, guess where your operating software is? Yep. So it's an unfair fight. So like, all you have to do is go back here and reset this. But unless you do, if these don't match, no way. Yeah. This is mental illness or addiction. Right. Or really chronic disease that otherwise doesn't resolve. Okay. Right. So I work with lots of physicians in my little area where they, they, they've done everything that should work. They have somebody they've done and it, and they don't respond to treatment. Then they go, Hey, Tarina, would you just kind of like sit with this person and see if you think this is why the, the, you know, their, their health isn't resolving. Cause pretty much they, this stuff should be kind of turning around. And then it's this. Yeah. Because if you have a chronic health issue that you can't resolve, if you're an addict or if you have a, a mental illness that doesn't kind of stabilize, guess what you have? Well, I mean, Trina, I think issue. of all these people that are, you know, couples counseling, going to psychiatrists and sitting there and talk therapy and getting blown the F up because there's nobody helping to integrate their trauma. Exactly. Because they go, well, let's not talk about that. And let's just focus on now and for going forward. So like, you know, today's a new day. And so all the symptoms of your trauma, let me give you a pill for that. It's so now there, there's a place for that. Because sometimes if you are loaded, you have to like have something to stabilize so you can do the trauma work. So sometimes I have to do a lot of work and nutritional supplements. I do mental health nutrition. So I, I always, when someone comes in for whatever they are, whether it's a head injury or trauma, I say, when was the last time you had blood work? Because I'm not going to sit and work on your depression until I know that your vitamin D isn't low right. and your thyroid isn't low and you don't have some other metabolic thing because they go together of course. Because as you have trauma, it trashes your health. So it's like the chicken or the egg. I mean, it doesn't really matter, I guess, but you have to do both sides or you didn't really help the person. So I collaborate with physicians on every single case because thy overactive thyroid feels like anxiety. Right. right. I can't tell you how often people are just treated for anxiety and they just have a high pregnancy. Yeah, I know. Thyroid. Believe me, I, go, I, I know. I know. And that's then, so uh, ridiculous. Uh, and vitamin D and thyroid, just simple right. stuff is, do yeah. you have any zinc on board? Right. Because if you don't have enough zinc, about five important things don't happen in your brain. Five, at least five things just don't, don't happen. And all you do eat is a zinc molecule. That's right. so simple. And there's a lot of people with very low vitamin D that are on antidepressants. Of course. And if they don't get better, that's how we know they don't really have depression. They have a low vitamin D, right? So like everything that you do is so similar to what I do. Exactly. But it's a little harder because for you, when you work with somebody's physical health, you can kind of see if they lose weight and you can kind of see their muscles improve and you can right. see their strength. This is super sneaky and hard to see. How do you know? What are you looking for? Can you see it? What, it, what am I supposed to look for? What you're going to look for is behavior. Right. Behavior tells you whether you have trauma or not. Because this stuff, that's why I have the BX is behavior. This is if you follow someone around with a GoPro, just follow them and just watch what they do. Don't listen to what they say. Right. Watch what this, they do. this is not what they believe and what they understand and what they're aware of. This is not a chart for that. Right. You can understand everything about being healthy and you can know all the rules and you can really have a real knowledge base of like, that's not good. That's not okay. And this is good. And, and I, I, I am driven to be different than my family of origin. Right. But if you just rely on this, like it's an unfair fight. Right. So I don't know if you know this, um, how the math works out on this. I freaked out the first time I saw this at a conference. I was literally like in a four hour big interpersonal neurobiology thing. And sure. when they did this thing that I'm going to do right now, I literally 
thought I was going to die. Because what I thought they were saying is like, there's no hope. You're just, you're, you're doomed. Because if your childhood sucked, like there's nothing you can do. Because this stuff right here, it determines 95% yep. of adult behavior. Yep. So Incredible. it's not just like two thirds, a third unfair fight. It's literally like this extreme of a problem. So every day you go like, I am not going to drink anymore. And it's this against this. No chance. How's that going to work? No chance. I'm not going to be crazy like my parents. Good luck. Not going to happen. Because this part of your brain goes funny. That's so cute. So and it people, gets you again. People are going to watch this podcast. It's so profound. And they're going to be like, oh, my God. I mean, how do I work with her? So let me Respect ask you before you say, what we're before up you against. answer that. Well, hold on. Before you answer that. <laughs> Who is not a candidate? It seems like everyone is a candidate. Everybody's going to have stuff that needs to be reset yeah. from just the first 26 years of life. So we just need to get over the whole stigma and the shame of like, oh my gosh, I have childhood trauma. And like, I have like this dysfunctional family and like, it keeps everybody from just fixing their stuff. Like, it's not even that hard. It doesn't yeah. take forever. Some of this stuff just goes. And a lot of trauma is looped together. So like, let's say you have 35 traumas in your childhood. I can do some EMDR on like three things and they all fall like dominoes. That's awesome. I can do three sessions and clear up 20 years worth of childhood trauma. Not 20 years of therapy. You don't do that anymore. <laughs> That's not a thing anymore. But I don't know that people are aware of that. Well, they're going to be after this podcast runs. Okay, so this is so profound. I'm going to bring you back on. But if somebody, again, just watched this and listened, and there will be many, and they want to work with you, what is the best way for them to do that? So they can just go to my website at TarinaPicarella.com. And then I have a YouTube channel that I just like threw up because after I did the thing with Michael Jaco, like there's so much need. And right now everybody is just beyond their threshold of coping. So right. now everybody's just really struggling. And so I want to try to give away as much information, just basic practical stuff everybody can do. And even awesome. just like what you said, what do you look for? And then what do you do about it? And so um, either my website or the YouTube channel, YouTube channel, if you have a friend that just needs to learn about this stuff, send them there. And then my, you can contact me through my uh, website to get an appointment. And a lot of times I triage it because maybe you live somewhere and, so I give a referral and I'm happy to do that. Well, no, but I mean, if you're going to be doing, you can obviously do telemedicine slash uh, virtual consults, correct? Yeah. Especially if I'm just doing brain balancing, because that's not therapy. If I'm just going to balance your brain, that's not therapy. So I can do that anywhere because it's just, it's like nutritional uh, brain balancing. And I, I use nutrition to get people's brain healthy enough. And then a lot of times, then they can do something like this, you know, but you have to have a baseline of functional health, right? And Bring a lot up. of people You're don't have that. Overwhelmed when this podcast runs. I mean, I know you've already had a really amazing response from Michael's, but this is much more strategic and specific. And this is going to be good for you, but, you know, not good for you from a standpoint of like, you're going to have a ton of patients, good for the world and that you're going to be able to share your amazing skill set with people who are desperately in need. Because, like, look, that's all we are. You know, I did a podcast earlier today with a guy, and we talked about that you're either right now in love and resonance, or fear and incoherence and dissonance. And that's that simple right now. There isn't in between. But I want everyone to hear this. This is why I wanted to come and talk on your show. I want people to have the awareness that sometimes people have an equipment issue. Right. Sometimes people otherwise could cr cross over onto the side of the light, sure. but they have an equipment issue and they just don't know that it's fixable. Right. And it's like, we can spread the word. Okay. Yep. And the other thing that I want everyone to know, which your, your audience may already know is if you know how to get into coherence and you know how to get into that resonant in integrated neural state, so you have three brains and they all need to turn on and like know about the others. <laughs> they have to play well with each other. So you have like 
how you figure stuff out. You have your heart, which is like, you can tell how important it is and how it yep. affects other people. And then your gut tells you like, if it's safe or not safe, you have to have all three of them functioning and like talking and playing well with each other. And if you can do that, you can figure out who's lying and who's telling the truth. If you can get your nervous system into coherence and just for everybody to like send people to heart math people, like, right. you know, if, if nothing else, they can go to the heart math site, site and learn about what coherence is. They can order that little, uh, that little, you know, sensor and they yep. can practice getting in coherence so they can see whether they're in it or not. Because if, if you can do that, you can do that yourself and you're doing the same thing that I would do as a therapist. I'm trying to just get people into that state. And if you can get into that state, you will always know if somebody's lying to you every time, because that's what that state does. That state is tapped into God. That yeah. state is the resonant frequency right. of the divine that made us and made the earth. And so if you can get into that space, you'll always know truth and not truth. You'll always know if someone's bad or good. You'll always know if somebody's out to hurt you or they're capable of kindness and helping you. And you don't have to go to everyone else for your answers. See how, because we keep talking about like, oh my gosh, like why don't people get it, right? Well, well, this is why they can't get into that neural state. They, de they don't have uh, any way to like, measure the vibration like vibrating resonating or not right. their equipment doesn't even do that for them that's so, so awesome. that's foundational too so like i think i'm just wanting to send the message that like people that are capable and people that know how to get in there we kind of have to like throw out a life raft and help the others a little there's a lot of people in the middle that can come over right and there's definitely like you're talking about, there really truly are people that cannot, Right. they can't. And I think people that have that ability to resonate, they can tell the difference, but there's a ton of people in the middle yeah, they can. that just need a little. And we are the ones that can make up the difference because you don't need to become their therapist. Right. But if you just stand next to somebody in the grocery store line, if you're resonating in that sweet spot of power versus force, if you're in that resonance, you can fix somebody else's nervous system by osmosis. Right. Like you can Bluetooth integrate them just by being in close proximity. You can be a ninja. You can be an energy ninja and you can change their vibration with yours. It's sort of like borrowing somebody else's nervous system. Right. And then you can find the middle. And then if, if there's a ton of us out and about, the more that people that are like disintegrated, the more that we're out and about and they get the bump and they're like, oh, what is that? That right. person feels so like, wow, what is that? Then we affect them because we can balance them. And when they're around us, they get a break and then they might like it. And then they might go, so what is your deal? Right. right? And we can like, rub off on them and then literally we change the world one nervous system at a time because every time we show somebody how to get into that resonant state it changes the frequency on the entire planet right and then we don't have to worry about people not having enough spidey senses to know they're being lied to by the you know what the M msm right we just stop having that conversation because they would clearly get it. They'd go, oh my gosh, right? right? But it's this, yeah. this makes you get the signal or not get the signal. So like, this is, I think the magic bullet because the more of this that's on the planet, we change the others without even them knowing and with really without their permission because like attracts like. Right. In the Global Coherence Initiative, they have tons of science on this. They have tons of signed to therapist. And you can find somebody that does EMDR. And EMDR is like you get trained. Everyone does it the same way. They're very good at like they won't certify you unless you do it with integrity. You do it the way that it's supposed to be done. So we all kind of do EMDR the same way, which is like super helpful because, you know, if you go to an EMDR person, you're going to get the same EMDR. It's not it's really helpful in that way. 
So it's always helpful. It never makes you worse. And it's effective, efficient, and like kids just process really quick. Well, I so- got a patient for you right now. She happens to live in my house. It's my 11-year-old daughter, Gabby. So I'm going to be hooking you up after the show. But uh, Taria Pecorello, this was a profound podcast. I am going to publish it very, very soon. Um, a lot of people are going to get benefit from you. Your website is Tarina, T-E-R-R-I-N-A, Picarello, P-I-C-A-R-E-E-L-O.com. You guys, please go to her website, book a session with her, talk to her, find out like how she can help you. Obviously, the link to her website will be in the bottom of this podcast. I mean, you were profoundly amazing. And again, I'm very humble and grateful that you were on here today. And like I said, I have a patient for you right away. So again, all of the amazing people on the Jay Campbell podcast, please support the amazing, profound individuals like Karina who come on the show. Book a consult with her. If you are traumatized, do not lay in the weeds any longer. The world is changing no. one brain at a time. It's and she's so the- fixable. Yep. She is one of the people that can make that happen. So remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.